Good morning. morning. Welcome to you. Grace to you. Peace to you. It is good for us. uh, It is good for us to be together. We are people of hope. We are people of vision, and we are people of courage. We will be making reference uh, from time to time, uh, off and on again, in our service to uh, the active shooter, uh, active shooting at the. Tree of Life Congregation in Pittsburgh. Uh, This is uh, got to be foremost in our hearts and minds here. We are not going to avoid it, but neither are we going to allow it to define us, but we will be talking about it. To that end, I would uh, say that if you have concerns, if you have questions, I want you to feel free to, to contact me, but also uh, I make priority in contacting Liz Curry. Liz is right here. She's with the Pittsburgh Steelers shirt. She's the president of our congregation. And don't, because she's wearing the Pittsburgh Steelers shirt, don't hold that against her. She really is an incredible leader and good listener. So please talk to her about it as well. It has also been pointed out to us that uh, we haven't done this in quite a long time. It's obviously the exits. Uh, are the ones that we see right here. Um, uh, There is another exit that is right behind the choir. Uh, It's a spiral staircase. Um, So it's not the fastest, it's not the fastest exit and you have to be very careful. And then the exit that we mostly don't know about or think of is the one that is through this door and it goes down a hallway out toward, uh, out toward the festival garden. So if, uh, if you feel that need, I know that the ushers are also at a place where they would go to these different places and they would uh, be ready to help you. In addition to that, for really several months, I, uh, really I think almost a year now, we have had various people at different places in our sanctuary uh, that have been very much aware, keeping their eyes open. Uh, the people that are in the sound booth, they watch from there, uh, able to see the whole congregation and what's going on. And we've had people who are on this part of the sanctuary looking out the windows and watching the parking lot as well. So are, there may be other security measures that we'll take. We don't know. Uh, we don't know for sure yet what that is. Our building and our grounds are not really designed for quick evacuation. We like people to come here and stay. And so uh, the design is just not with that in mind. We have been doing a lot of work, and I'll make reference to it in the Word About Life. We've been doing a lot of work regarding uh, security uh, for our preschool. We recognize that we need to divide, we need to enhance that discussion, that we need to be thinking about security in terms of our campus, and uh, our preschool and our church. And also we need to be thinking about it in terms of safety, medical, security, and enforcement. That these are the different areas. We have done a lot of conversation with different groups, including the head of security at Scottsdale Bible, as well as alarm companies and security door companies, those kinds of things. We are looking at all of that. I want to tell you that in those conversations, some of the conclusions that we come to is, yes, let's be smart. Let's take security measures. We value one another. We value life, every life. But there are things about who we are that we do not want to compromise. Our values of inclusion, injustice, spirituality, our care for one another, being a welcoming congregation. And so we want to see people who visit us, we want them to feel welcome and loved and valued. We are not wanting to start with any kind of mentality that says if we don't know you, then you, we consider you a threat first until proven otherwise. That is not our mentality. That is not where we're going. There are some churches that actually have security that are armed. That's not where we're going. That's not, that's, don't, we don't think that's who we are. So I want you to know 
that we had these conversations starting a long time ago and that this incident yesterday, this tragic incident yesterday, all it does is reinforce the rightness of the conversations that we've had. I'll say more about that later. So, Thank that's... You, Ken. You're welcome. Okay. So, keep our eyes open. Keep our hearts open. Okay? And... Uh, Speaking of being a welcoming congregation, tonight Family Promise uh, guests will be coming and there is some sign-ups yet. Barb, do you want to speak to that? Hi. I don't very often get up here and beg. I know Bob Monday used to do it a lot. Well, today I'm begging. We still have, the guests are coming tonight, and we still have eight evening slot hosts open, 6.30 to 8.30, no, seven. Thank you, Hubert. Um, and we still have six overnight spots open. So please, 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 if you have any time at all, please come up and help us out. And if you can't, they'll be back in January. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Okay, and then the other announcement is uh, Heidi, uh, our financial our financial officer, uh, wants to send uh, this this gentle reminder to you: um, fill out and turn in your darn pledge cards. Okay, <laughs> so um, so that's where we are in the budget process as well. Again, grace to you, peace to you, welcome to you. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey. You are welcome here. Gordon, please call us to worship. Would you please stand as you're comfortably able and join me in the entry into worship. Morning has come. Night is away. Rise with the sun and welcome the day. Let us celebrate the richest richness of and diversity of life. Join me in our call to worship, God of all time, God of eternity. Our, to you. our endings are often your beginnings. Our dreams are often your realities. You affirm our past and give life to our future.
Join with me in prayer, please. Gracious God, we tried to sing that last song to give ourselves strength for the week to come. But maybe our hearts weren't really in it. It happens. For too many of us, the past week was just too hard. Neighbors south of us are traveling far from their homeland, trying to escape violence. Some of us are stuck at home watching this service on video because our health prevents us from joining these gathered here. And it's been that way for weeks and months. Bombs are being mailed to prominent politicians. People are being shot in a Pittsburgh synagogue. It's too much to bear, we think. May we all find courage and healing through this time we share together. Surprise us with joy. May it be so, O Holy One. May all the people say, Amen. Amen. So this is the time in our service when we lift up the celebrations of our lives. It can be a birthday, it can be an anniversary, it could be perhaps you were surprised by grace. Whatever it is, I invite you to stand and let an usher come to you with a microphone, and that way all of us can share in this celebration, of, celebration of the deep goodness of life. So we'll start on this side, and we'll slowly move across the room, and we come to Janice. Good morning, all. I just want to share that I called the church office, I think it was Friday morning, and I found out that you couldn't talk to anybody or schedule anything because my son in Japan sent me a message that said, Mom, we're coming um, December 20th through January 6th, and we want the new baby, Lucia, she's four and a half months old, to be baptized by that really cool dude, uh, <laughs> Pastor Ken. Nothing else will suffice. So because I couldn't get through to anybody, I made this announcement. So now he'll really feel obligated. Thank you. Amen. Amen. All right. This would be great. We love these, these family baptisms and celebrations. Thank you. Bert. I'm Bert Ruby. A uh, couple of things. I was thinking there's another exit downstairs that you didn't point out. There's one going out the front door and one as you go down the hall to the left, but it goes up and a very steep stair and it ends up over by the air conditioners, by the, uh, the garden over there. It's difficult because the, the steps are pretty steep. Um, I also wanted to celebrate all the first responders who have been responding and I think this is an example of what happens when we work across the aisles. It was uh, George W. Bush who got agencies to speak a common language so they understand in code, whether it's fire or ambulance or police, to coordinate their activities. And it, it has enhanced how quickly people respond and we should celebrate that when we work together. Amen. Thank you for that. Good work. Thank you. All right. Betty. I'd like to, I'm Betty Wolver, and I'd like to introduce my sister, my youngest sister from New Jersey, Edna May. Welcome. Welcome. We've had many people tell me this morning, well, she had to be your sister. Looks just like ah. you. <laughs> Well, welcome. So glad you're here. <laughs> Good. All right. Linda. Uh, this week, the Merrill family, while we were worried and concerned about what was going on in the world, our grandson, Ravi, arrived from London and Anguilla to be with his mother to care for our daughter's friend who is really struggling with her cancer. And we decided to have a family dinner. We went to a restaurant, and while we were there, 
our granddaughter Kelly, you may remember she was in the terrible accident that we spoke about in January, announced that she was one of the 200 teachers selected by the Fiesta Bowl organization granting teachers wishes and she has been awarded that and also told me that she will be on the float in the Fiesta Bowl parade and will be honored at halftime in the, in the football game. Wonderful. So we are happy. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Hubert. Uh, hi. Hello. Uh, I have two celebrations this week. And the first one is uh, uh, I want to celebrate Ken. I saw him on uh, PBS Horizons the other day. And... The sir was out here, you know, spilling hat truths on TV, and I truly thought that was that was amazing. Uh, he did not kind of fall for their, you know, kind of ridiculous questions that don't make sense and try to sort of speak the truth about immigration, which uh, nobody ever does. And my sec <laughs> my second celebration starts. It's very complicated. So I started a new job this week in Tempe, Arizona. So that's great. And on Thursday, I had an accident. So that's not great because I kind of don't have a car to drive all the way to Tempe on a job that I just started. But this morning, I was actually speaking to um, uh, to Barb to sort of cancel my family promise because I was like, with the bus, it's not going to work. And Michael Curry overheard the conversation and was like, oh, well, you don't have to worry about this. I'm going to be gone for, from Wednesday to Sunday so you can borrow my car. So I want to celebrate that, you know? Uh, just lots of kindness and love that I always get from Shadow Rock. Amen. Okay. All right, good. Okay. Karen. Hi, good morning, I'm Karen. Um, two quick celebrations, one personal. Um, next Sunday, I won't be here, but it's Scott's birthday. So um, it's the one before a big one, so I'll leave that to your imagination. <laughs> and uh, the second, um, the second celebration is celebrating the kids who are in Sunday school this morning. We had a great group, and they're going to do a little collection for the UMOM family shelter in Phoenix. So I'll probably, it's really something that the kids are going to do, but in case you want to be young at heart and bring something, I'll have a list in Rock the Week this week. Thanks. Good. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Patricia. I'm Dr. Patricia. <laughs> Um, I, like many of you, felt very overwhelmed yesterday, and um, I received a wonderful email from the president of my seminary, and I just had to read it to you. Dear friends, I awoke up this morning to the news of the domestic terrorist attack on the Tree of Life Congregation Synagogue in the Squirrel Hill neighborhood of Pittsburgh. I struggled to find words that would not sound hollow. And yet I knew that to remain silent was not an option. I am angry and brokenhearted. And as a person of faith, I am more determined than ever to work to do what I can to end anti-Semitism, white supremacy, racism, patriarchy, xenophobia, and all of the violence associated with them. This attack on top of the racially motivated shooting of two African Americans in a, in a Kentucky grocery store and the attempted bombings of many public figures across the country is horrific and I can feel overwhelming. And it can feel overwhelming. So I write to you today with an invitation to join me in offering our most sincere condolence to the family and friends hurt by the horrors of such acts, in condemning such atrocities and the dehumanization rhetoric that always follows them, with our voices, our bodies, and our <coughs> votes, in recommitting ourselves to the sacred work of our interreligious partnerships, and in rooting all our efforts in God's vision and peace with justice. And after bursting in tears, I realize that what protects me from being any different from those who live in hate is this community, living in a community of faith and maintaining an open heart to all that is sacred. Thank you, Dr. Patricia.
Sharon, friend. Well, I brought a little fun with me this morning. Every time we get to see our little Dexter and realize that he used to be one pound nine ounces, it brings great joy into our lives. And Dewey has a Halloween cast on. So he looks like a pumpkin on his right leg. And Picasso nice. decorated the front of his cast because he was sitting in his recliner yesterday when Dexter arrived. So the front of his cast is all decorated by Dexter, so nobody can touch that. But the back of his cast that everybody sees when he goes on his scooter is bare. Mm. So I brought a couple of black pins with me and anybody who feels like putting a note of joy or a heart or just a check mark or okay. whatever okay. is welcome to decorate Dewey's cast. Wonderful. And he will be waiting in the narthex with his knee <laughs> on his scooter. We'll send him out a little bit ahead. Wonderful. So he'll have two black markers, and you can put whatever you want on there. Dewey, that's so gracious of you to <laughs> let us do that. <laughs> uh, I thought we might need to do something a little joyful today. Yeah, absolutely. And I tell you what, you got some good looking legs for an old man. <laughs> All right. Linda. Hi, Linda Johnson. So Dewey, can you actually read what's written on the back of your cast? Oh, yes, right. Uh -huh. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so three things. First of all, the choir, you may think we're just big goofballs back here, but we're actually watching as well to see what's happening yes, behind you. you on the mountain. Um, moment of grace. I read on Facebook this morning that um, the Muslim community of Pittsburgh has already overnight um, raised several thousand dollars for the Jewish community in, um, you know, in support of their brothers. And the third thing is, I actually remembered all three things. That's a celebration. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, our young, our old, yes, youngest son Chris will be 35 on Thursday. All right, all right. I'm only 45. So I know. How's that happen? All right, very good, very good. All right, well friends, uh, much to celebrate. The world throws a lot at us, and yet the deep goodness of life, the power of love to transform the world is still affirmed. So let's sing our celebration song. <laughs> Just a word of note, uh, even though it is mentioned in the bulletin but not printed out, we are using the prayer of Jesus in our, our, this prayer this morning. Join with me in prayer, please. Great Spirit, God of many names, we center ourselves in you, preparing to say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Maybe we say it every day maybe once a week. But have we noticed how beautifully it expresses the comprehensive view of life that we strive for in our congregation? It's placing you, this placing of you in heaven seems to try to say that you are bigger than we can imagine, yet at the same time our ground of being as well. It seeks to unify the realm you desire with the realm of our daily lives. It asks for daily bread, 
something so simple, so mundane, yet so vital, something we pull off a grocery shelf because we are too lazy to make it. It speaks of forgiveness, something we think we may not need nor are willing to give, though we desperately need to give and receive. It reminds us that the evil we see in life tempts us to think that we can use it ourselves to fight it, but that only perpetuates the cycle. And despite all this, you renew life and joy and hope for all eternity for those willing to listen. So grant that we might live into this prayer and it live into us as we join together saying, our loving God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'll be playing a Jewish hymn titled Nina Nato, memorializer killed in the tree of life in synagogue shooting. It means that brothers would sit together in Thank you. Our offerings for the celebration of life in this place and beyond shall now be received.
Our gifts have been collected and are now presented in hope and thanksgiving. We offer them for the good of our neighbors, our city, and our world. Thank you. It's a real blessing. Thank you. So the, I, I want you to understand that the word about life, uh, I know it may be hard to believe, but um, there is some thought that's given to all of this um, before Saturday night. And, um, and yet it always is amazing to me the way the spirit of life and love will bring things together. And so here is a word about life. A Japanese proverb, the nail that sticks out gets hammered down. And then from Proverbs, even fools are thought wise if they keep silent and discerning if they hold their tongues. And then from Kathy King's book, Raise Your Voice, Why We Stay Silent and How to Speak Up. Learning to use your voice is about understanding how we each are created in God's image. It's about the space in which gender, faith, ethnicity, and race converge, adding to the power and beauty of individual voices effectively impacting and shaping the church and the world. It's about knowing deeply how God sees you, grounded in the truth that we are all created in God's image, and using your voice in word, deed, and art to communicate the good news in a messed up world. May the spirit of life and love bless the reading, the hearing, and the living of this word about life. Amen. Last week, uh, we began a small sermon series called Raise Your Voice. My message, 
My messages are inspired and informed by Kathy King's book, Raise Your Voice. We began last week with some storytelling about Esther. We ended the message by saying Esther could not raise her voice until she found her voice. She found her voice when she came to understand that she had a unique time and place in history. For such a time as this, she was born to raise her voice for her people's sake. So before we raise our voice, we must find our voice. Our voice is more than our vocal cords. Our voice is our identity, our words, and our actions. We have in our covenant, our statement of faith as Shadow Rock, the phrase that we will balance our proclamation of the word about life with the deeds that make life good. We think that our voice is only about our vocal cords, but it is more than that. Our voice is our influence in our interaction with our neighbors. Our voice is the embodied integration of our proclamation with our deeds. When our voice springs out of our values of inclusion, justice, and spirituality, we echo the deep goodness of life. We echo God's character. We echo Jesus' good news to all people. Our voice is both the proclamation and good deeds. In our limited and finite existence, word and deed are separate, and we must be intentional about integrating them, putting them together. For God, word and action are the same. God speaks, and the action of creation and the creation of action happens at the same time. Let there be light. Such wholeness is the goal when we raise our voice. Some preschool parents are concerned about our proclamation of the word about life and our deeds to make life good, especially as we apply it to our ministries to immigrants, refugees, and asylum seekers. I understand their love for their children and fierce desire to protect their children. I want to do everything to protect them and assure the parents. Most parents also want to have all these ministries on the same campus, believing their children are better human beings because we live out our values with integrity. As far as we know, all the parents love our work and believe it is the right thing to do. They want the work to be done. However, a few do not want the work to be done here through us. The parents who do not want to share our campus with other ministries, especially Sanctuary and Hope Station, believe they are perfectly within their rights as consumers and concerned parents to ask us to stop those ministries. They do not understand that they are asking us to shut down our voice. They do not understand that our ministry to children in our preschool and our ministry to children in families seeking asylum spring out of the same values spring out of the same vision, spring out of the same mission of what it means to be Shadow Rock United Church of Christ. To shut down one because of the other would be to shut down our integrity with our proclamation of the word about life and our deeds that make life good for every life. To shut down one because of the other would be to lose our voice, and shut us up. I want to be clear. We did have 
two families that left, and we were able to fill those spots with our waiting list. We do not have families leaving. We do have families expressing their concern, and we hear their concerns. And this was movement, action, conversation, discernment, planning, implementation, all before yesterday. Yesterday puts an exclamation point on it. Now the board has spent a lot of time talking about the Shadow Rock brand. What is our brand? How do we market our brand? How do we sell ourselves so that we grow and expand our capacity to sustain and thrive? This is often seen as voice, the throat chakra, and a megaphone of social media, the Moon Valley Tadler, radio and TV. This is a good discussion for us to have, and we need to figure this stuff out. However, we need to be careful. Our true voice is not our vocal cords. It is our heart. Our true voice is not a megaphone of technology or social media, but the way we love our neighbor. Our true voice is not a brand. It is an identity. We are first and foremost human beings reflecting the image of God. Before this truth is a proclamation, it is a deep core identity and a hard and fast reality. We are the imago dei. We are the image of God, individually and collectively. When we raise our voice out of this identity, we become proclamations and deeds of healing, hope, justice, and beauty for people living in pain, despair, anger, fear, and loneliness. Is this not what all our ministries attempt to do? Is this not what we attempt to be for one another? All our ministries and all our people are the raised voice of Shadow Rock, a voice for peace and justice. In the context of raising our voice, I want to speak to the shooting at the synagogue in Pittsburgh. The good people of the Tree of Life congregation need our prayers and our voice. There have been hundreds of school shootings and scores of active shootings at places of worship. That is the new reality. That many of the statistics actually start in 1999 with the shooting at Columbine High School. There is a list. I won't read that to you. You can go online and find it. But trying to figure out how to speak to this The vehicle of a sermon didn't seem right. I wanted it to be more intimate. And so I wrote a letter. Dear friends, we are saddened by another mass shooting. We will be intentional about holding space in our hearts, minds, and prayers for the good people of the Tree of Life Jewish congregation. While all the violence and the moral and physical injury it causes horrifies us, there is something about yesterday's shooting that may hit us a little closer to home emotionally. We are mindful of the Jewish congregation that meets on our campus. They are our friends, and they worship under our roof. We hear their rabbi chant the psalms. We see their youth move around the campus, and we eat their koshered hot dogs. <laughs> we want to protect all people, but we feel especially protective of the people who share our home. The shooter was vehemently anti 
immigration. He made no distinction between refugees, undocumented people, sanctuary leaders, and asylum seekers. They were all, quote unquote, hostile invaders that deserved to die. And anyone who was kind to them and offered hospitality to the stranger, according to our faith, they deserved to die as well. For the shooter, it was kill or be killed. Who is he talking about? Who is he wanting dead? Remember Misiel Perez? Remember Ishmael Delgado? Do you know Sixto and his son, Ian? Do you know Abet and her beautiful, smart, funny children? The shooter wants them dead. Do you know Herb and Mike, who prepared and served food? Do you know Sherry, who did laundry? The shooter wants them dead. Do you know Dr. Patricia and Rita Rainwater, who tended to their hurts and illnesses? The shooter wants them dead. We could go on and on because haters got to hate, and when you hate this much, you don't just hate some people, you hate all of life. And you want to see the whole world die. In 2008, a shooter walks into a Unitarian Universalist church in Knoxville, Tennessee. The shooter targeted the church because, quote, of its liberal teachings and his belief that all liberals should be killed because they were ruining the country, unquote. The shooter also targeted the church because he felt it was a cult that worshiped the God of secularism. Trying to discern God's newest thrust in history is trying to live true to our values. And when we do this, there are some things that some people may not like. We are open and affirming of LGBTQA and I human beings. We produce hospitality, we provide hospitality and hope to migrants. We find joy in sharing our campus with progressive Catholics and Reformed Jews. And we are one of the most theologically liberal congregations you will ever find. We are providing lots of reasons for some people to hate and fear us. So what do we do from here? Should we be quiet? Should we shrink our presence? Should we decrease our work? Should we lose our voice and just shut up? Perhaps we should give the Jewish congregation notice. Perhaps we tell ICE we don't want any more asylum-seeking families and give Sixto and Abet notice. Perhaps we should firm up our loosey-goosey liberal theology and become a bit more defined, a little more rigid, a little more orthodox. If we do these things, we will leave a much smaller footprint. We will not be the nail that sticks out looking for someone to come and hammer us down. We will be forgotten. We will fall off society's radar screen. We will become incredibly mediocre. And we will probably be safer for it. If we lose our voice and just be quiet, then we will not call attention to ourselves. This might be smart and a life of fear. But it is a life, and better than being dead. Or is it? Or is it? 
as your pastor, should I be quiet? Am I making us more vulnerable as I speak for justice and inclusivity? If so, what right do I have to do so? I have thought most of my life that God had a claim on me and in order to be true to my vows, I had to raise my voice. And this was easy. It was an easy task when the only thing at risk for me was losing my job. However, things feel different now. In the week of pipe bombs and a shooting in a synagogue, we need to be a lot more intentional about our faith, about our voice, about our choices, about our risks, and our security. And so I leave you with the question, Should we be smart and live in fear? Because, after all, isn't living better than being dead? Or is it? Amen. Join with me in the significant words for mission for this day. Let us go forward free to live outside the walls that isolate and fragment. Let us live most holy, children and most holy. These are the times. We are the people. May all of creation is blessed. May God be with you. And also with you. Amen.